What's up, man? I bumped into Jack today. Bumped into? Hmm? He's an old friend. We hadn't seen each other for a long time, you know, since I drifted off. Drift off? What? We went to a restaurant and... <laughs> and he picked out. <laughs> picked out? Sorry, I don't understand. Hmm. You have to learn some advanced idioms and phrasal verbs for everyday conversation. Let's do that! Hello, my name is Maddie from POC English and in this lesson we're going to learn some advanced idioms and phrasal verbs that you must know for everyday conversations. In this lesson, I've also prepared some cool dialogues for you, so make sure you watch this lesson to the end, because at the end, I also have a quiz for you. So let's begin. The first phrasal verb is to bump into. Bump into, what does it mean? Well, if you bump into somebody, you meet them by chance. You're walking on the street and Oh, Jack! You bumped into Jack. You met Jack by chance. Look at this example. I bumped into an old school friend the other day. I bumped into the friend. Oh, you're that guy from school. Hey, this is Mandy. Now, bump into means to meet someone by chance. But what if you see something by chance? So you're walking in your room and you're looking around. Oh my god, is that my high school notebook? Did you bump into your notebook? No, you stumbled across your notebook. So, to stumble across something means to find something by chance. So, you bump into somebody, you stumble across something. Look at this. I stumbled across my old notebook from primary school the other day in the garage. Next phrasal verb is about relationships. It's an informal phrasal verb. To hook up. To hook up is an informal way of saying to form a relationship. For example, I go to a club, I see a beautiful girl and we hook up. It means we start a relationship. We form a relationship. Look at this example. I hooked up with a beautiful girl the other night at the club. It means I met the girl, she was beautiful, I liked her, she liked me, we hooked up. We formed a relationship. The next phrasal verb is an interesting one. To drift apart. What does it mean? Well, to drift apart means to become less and less and less and less friends with somebody. For example, I was very close to one of my friends from high school, but he went to a university in another city. We couldn't see each other anymore every day. So, little by little, hmm, we're no longer friends now. Look at this example. Jack and I were intimate friends. Intimate friends means very good friends, best friends. But recently, we have drifted apart. We don't see each other anymore. The next phrasal verb is again about relationships. What do you do if you are in a relationship, but the relationship is not working? I mean, you don't like each other anymore, you're always fighting and you're on each other's nerves. What should you do? Well, you should split up. Split up means to get separated. Split up. After a long argument, Elizabeth and her boyfriend split up last week. They stopped being in a relationship. They split up. Next phrasal verb is to put up with. Pay attention. Phrasal verbs usually have one verb and one particle, which is a preposition, like hook up, go out. These are phrasal verbs. But we also have some phrasal verbs that have more than one particle. In this case, put up with. This is one verb with two particles. Put is the verb, up and with are the particles. Two prepositions. Should I use both of them or is it okay if I only use one, like to put up or to put with? No, you must use both of them. Put up with somebody or something. But what does it mean? If you put up with something or if you put up with somebody, it means you tolerate without complaining. It is used for a bad or negative thing that 
annoys you, but you decide to say nothing. That's annoying, but I'm going to put up with it. He's always complaining about everything, but his parents put up with him. I mean, he's annoying, but his parents say, ah, oh, that's our child. What should we do? Oh, let's just tolerate. Another interesting phrasal verb that has a negative meaning to mess somebody around. Mess somebody around? It means to treat someone in a bad way, as if they are not important and that you are important. So, well, yeah, I don't care if it's bad for him or her. It's just good for me. So you just mess them around. She really messed me around when she cheated on me. She messed me around. In everyday conversation, you might want to use this phrasal verb, figure out. What does it mean? To figure out means to understand something and to come up with a solution. Figure out. It's a very hard issue and I can't figure out what to do. It means I can't understand what to do. I can't find a solution. I can't figure out what to do. Now, when you have a problem or when there is something difficult, you might want to deal with. To deal with a problem or to deal with a situation. What does it mean? It means to do something about it, to try to solve it, to try to find a solution. It was a very hard situation, but I could deal with it very well. The situation was really hard, but I could deal with it very well. I found a solution and the situation no longer exists. I dealt with it. Past of deal is dealt. Deal with a problem? Dealt with a problem. The next phrasal verb is to grapple with. Now, to grapple with can have two meanings. One, if you grapple with somebody, it means you fight with that person. I'm grappling with somebody. Go away. But if you grapple with something, it means you try to solve that difficult situation. It is used for difficult situations or difficult problems. If you grapple with a difficult topic, difficult problem, difficult situation, you try to deal with it. You try to solve it. But if you grapple with somebody, you fight with them. And finally, to get over something. Get over something. What does it mean? If you get over something, that exactly means you get over it. It means you go past it. You forget about it. You just move on. Get over it. It is used for negative feelings. For example, me and my girlfriend, well, she cheated on me and I don't feel good now. But my friend says, come on, man, it's been five years. Get over it. It means it's been five years. Just move on. Forget about her. Now, enough. Let's see how to use these phrasal verbs in dialogue. Hey, why are you so sad? A few months ago, I bumped into one of my classmates. Uh, her name is Sarah and we hooked up. Wow, it's so great. You finally found someone to go out with. Not actually. We gradually drifted apart. It wasn't a serious relationship. And she was just messing me around. And you just put up with her? At first, yes. But I figured out what was going on and we split up. So you managed to deal with the situation. Uh, that's good. But that's not the end. See, last night I stumbled across some of our photos and... I think I'm still in love with her. I'm still grappling with the breakup. Really? Oh, come on, dude, get over it. She's gone. Such a lovely lesson, isn't it? Let's continue the lesson, but before that, let me tell you something. Do you want to have the summary of this lesson with the full list of the phrasal verbs, idioms, and collocations that you are learning in one PDF file? And not just this lesson. Do you want to have the summary of all of my YouTube channel videos in one book with 400 pages? Then you can download my ultimate English book for free. This is free and it has all of the lesson summaries of all of my videos on YouTube from day one. It has 400 pages. It's extremely valuable. I love it so much and I think you must have it. It's free to download it. Click on the link above my head. Go to my website, type in your name, your email address, click download, and you will receive the book in your email. Enjoy. All right, let's get back to the second part of this lesson. The next phrasal verb we're going to learn is to stick up 
four. Again, this is one verb with two particles. Stick up for. If you stick up for somebody, what does it mean? You stick up? No, you support them. Go ahead, man. I stick up for you. I'll always be with you. I will support you. I will stick up for you. The next one is to harp up about something. Harp up. What does it mean? Well, to harp up about something means to continue talking about something again and again and again and again and again. And Five again. hours later. Again and again and again. That is to harp up about something. It's very annoying, isn't it? Look at this example. Can you stop harping up about how great Miranda looked at the party? Can you stop harping up about how great she looked at the party? So here's my friend saying, Whoa, did you see Miranda? Whoa, Miranda was amazing. Whoa, I like Miranda. Whoa, did you see her boyfriend? Whoa, she was amazing. And I said, Oh, come on, dude. Would you stop harping up about her? The next phrasal verb is to build somebody up or build something up. What does it mean? Does it mean you build it? No. To build somebody up, it means to talk about something in a very positive way more than that person actually is. So it's often exaggerated. What do I mean? Well, let's say there is a girl who is beautiful, but I say, whoa, look at her. Wow, she's the best, she's a goddess. Wow, and my friend says, oh, come on, she's nice, but stop building her up. It means, yeah, she's good, but don't exaggerate. If you build somebody up, you talk about them in a positive way more than they actually are. You can also use it for objects. Let's say I want to sell my watch and it's a, it's a good watch, not a great watch, but I say, do you want to have the best watch in the world? This is the most accurate watch in the world and you must have it because it's stylish. I am building it up more than it actually is. So I'm exaggerating. And now, three phrasal verbs about eating before we see a dialogue. These three are very interesting. The first one is to pig out. Pig out? Pig out, what does it mean? If you pig out, you eat a lot of food in an embarrassing way. That is pigging out. For example, I am on a diet, but I pigged out last night because the food was great. Next one is to eat up. Imagine you have a plate and on the plate you have some food. If you eat up your meal, it means you eat everything on the plate. You cleaned the plate completely. You ate it up. You ate everything that was on your plate. And that I think is good because you don't waste food. So you must eat up your dish, your meal. And finally, to pick at something. If you pick at food, it means you either don't like the food or that you're not hungry and you just take small bites. That is to pick at your food. Now, let's see how to use these in a dialogue. Your ex-girlfriend looked amazing last night at the party. Would you please stop harping up about her? It seems you're jealous. Her boyfriend was also very handsome. You were building him up. He wasn't that great. He was pigging out all the time. Ah, good for him. The food was great, but I wasn't hungry. So I just picked at it. Yeah, I know you. You always eat up and never say no to food. But I still think you shouldn't have split up with her. Could you please stick up for me instead of them? I am your friend. Sorry, dude. I just want you to face the reality. And that is it. These are the phrasal verbs we have learned in this lesson, but I won't let you go without a quiz. Here's question one. Pay close attention to it. I was the problem for a long time. Grappling with, stumbling across, drifting apart. Hmm. Yes. Grappling with. To grapple with a problem means to try to solve it, to try to deal with it. And the second question, the last question of this mini quiz, let's see. 
I didn't like the food, so I just it. I just picked out, picked at, or built up. Hmm. I didn't like the food, so I just picked at the food. To pick at means to take small bites because you don't like it or because you're not hungry. And that's it. Well done. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, click subscribe. See you.